Welcome to the See Through Podcast. We're joined today by James Kerwin. He's an How's artist from Dublin. James, how are you? Great, great. Thanks <laughs> Thank for having me. Thank you for me. coming on. Um, so just let me know a little bit about yourself and, and your background. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a studio artist, mostly paintings, and I also paint murals out in the streets as well. So you might talk to me a little bit about when you kind of first became interested in art or when you're... Yeah, it's, it's kind of just been a constant, like... Um, even in school, I knew from early on, early on that I just wanted to kind of go the art direction. I had a really good um, teacher as well. Shout out to Paul McCluskey down at Gorey Community School. Uh, he really pushed artists who were inter- anyway interested in putting together a portfolio. And uh, so there was no doubt even there, yeah. like earlier on, just kind of went for it, you know. Very good. So when you first started, were you working paint or were you kind of more interested in other of art yeah I was, I was always mm. kind of drawing and painting yeah. um i went to ncad but i did print making there um but i i never really stuck with it mm. like yeah. i have a couple of times since but uh, i was all it was always kind of painting for me i i kind of figured I, when i went to college i wanted to try something a bit different so mm. i felt like the kind of grounds for painting were there already you know yeah. and when you look back on that time in gory community college and your teacher there did you do it like for your leaving search? You obviously done, yeah. Art. Uh, did you get a portfolio ready when you were in school or? Yeah, it, uh, in school, uh, I felt maybe I was a little bit young, kind of starting college. Mm. I probably could have done with an extra year or so. So along the way, I ended up repeating twice when I was in college. Okay, yeah. Art college, mm. like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I kind of laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, t- I, I took the long scenic route, but eventually, kind of got there and kind of caught myself on a bit. And yeah. yeah, do you think that is there anything that you do now that you learned when you were in secondary school art? Um, I mean, things like just like drawing techniques, like drawing. Even though I don't do it a whole lot now, it's still the kind of basis. Mm for a lot of things yeah. like you know if you have your kind of drawing skills mm. down then yeah. it just gives you a lot more freedom and how was your style evolved then from you first starting off drawn or interest in art to what you've what you now produce it, like it took me a long time to kind of find what i was about um i, I kind of like years ago i was kind of more I was getting more into kind of like humorous, kind of almost illustration-based work. Okay. Um, and then just over time, just kind of was experimenting more with like painting and um, just exploring that a bit more. It was kind of around 2014, 2015 was kind of a, a major shift in my work mm. when I started to kind of take it more seriously. And I was kind of spending more time being a bit more meticulous and kind of honing my skills with kind of realistic based imagery Mm. and then also at the same time experimenting with abstract just color yeah Yeah. you know so kind of since then that's really when when i look back is where i really Mm. like took off yeah i guess that leads into my next question because a lot of your work kind of fuses kind of natural forms or studies of kind of landscape or organic forms with geometric uh, kind of blocks of color and things like that so what are the kind of main influences when you're painting something yeah i guess like i'm just interested in nature and landscape anyway so maybe that i think that kind of comes true in the work but like starting off like it it like i'll have canvases sitting there for maybe up to a year or longer and i i tend to work a lot on multiple ones at the same time i put them away take them back out yeah. So it's kind of like a slow build up of mm. layers and just experimenting with forms and color and mm, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just to kind of touch on it there, what are the first stages like before you start, let's say, working on a couple of canvases? When you go to start work on that that canvas, you're going to start next. What's what's this? How how, how do you start that process? Uh, I mean, it really depends. Like. If it's for something specific and there's a deadline, sometimes that can help me and just I will produce a canvas in a shorter space and mm. time wise than I normally do. Yeah. But otherwise, like I'll always have something on the go, like I was just saying. Mm. And again, if depending on 
what it's for or if I have an idea, I have an image maybe saved on my phone that I want to incorporate into something. Yeah. Mm. I'll see which canvas I've been working on, which one it suits kind of best. Mm. And yeah. And do you, do you ever start with a sketch or do you, is it, do you work straight onto the canvas? What, what, what way do you do it? Yeah. I like, I don't, I just, just layers and layers. I don't, I don't know. I wish I was kind of better at planning something to start, mm-hmm. like start to finish a bit more. But uh, it's kind of just improvising and making it up as I go along, really, like yeah. being honest. But there's a great freedom of that. Yeah. 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 It's it's a it's a really nice freedom. Yeah, and yeah. I'm kind of that's what I'm about. Like yeah, just yeah. freedom to do whatever I want. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So is there kind of. A tool or some piece of equipment or something that you need in your studio to get to get the work done, or what is it that you work off of? A tool, mm. in what sense? <laughs> in now? terms of like, do you use any kind of even software or like practical tools and for uh, like yeah. assembling images that you're gonna to get yourself a base on it? Yeah, I mean, again, it depends on what mm. if I have a painting in mind for a particular show or submission yeah. or a commission, even mm-hmm. then I would tend to delve into photoshop a bit yeah 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 yeah. um but that's it again i'm like really basic with Mm -hmm. photoshop and yeah yeah yeah. you know i don't like to spend too much time and under the screen that way it's just more hands-on tactile you work on a very diverse range of mediums as anyone who knows your work will know um what do you prefer canvas or wall (laughs) (laughs) um both for different reasons really like canvas because like you know i have loads of them on the go in the studio and i have the comfort and privacy of my studio Mm. Mm. and that's what kind of tends to why they take so long some sometimes you know Mm. but um painting on walls for the sheer scale and how quickly I can get something done, which I'm still, I still kind of impress myself sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Like time wise, mm. painting a mural versus a little canvas in the yeah, studio, yeah, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, when I started painting walls, I just, I really took to spray paint, kind of similar to acrylic in some sense, but um, I just, the scale, I just find it easier to work larger yeah. and quicker that way, you know? Mm. Do you use the same process? Do you, do you give yourself freedom on a wall as well? Or is it more set out, more planned? Uh, well, because time isn't really on your side, you kind of have to plan a bit more, especially if it's going to be, you know, a realistic kind of image in there, or mm. something nature related or whatever, a uh, portrait or something. Yeah. So you, you have to kind of plan it out a bit. Mm. But um, I have, like, you know, when I do the odd wall just for myself, then it's more, I don't have any plan. And yeah. It's just I bring a bunch of colours and see what see what, what comes up. And Good. So you also host a monthly kind of radio show on DDR, Dublin Digital Radio. Can you talk to me a bit about that? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah, once a month. Uh, <coughs> Journey Quest is the name of the show on DDR. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I do it once a month. I've been doing it just over a year now. Um, and I love it. Like yeah. it's, it's on a Monday morning, so I try and kind of tone it down a little bit. You can't be going too mad at that hour, yeah, that yeah, day, yeah. the week. But um, yeah, it's ju- again, it's just another avenue of kind of expressing what mm-hmm. I'm into. Like I collect a lot of records, and yeah. I used to DJ a lot, and then I kind of decided to kind of knock it on the head for a long time. I get serious about art, mm-hmm. so, but music has never left me you know it's yeah, just um yeah, yeah. it's i just love putting together yeah like and would it be hour. a kind of mix of genres or what is what is it mainly you're playing yeah i yeah. mean i can't, can't, like again it's discovering like vinyl records mm-hmm. purely by the cover of something yeah. and i bring it home and it'll blow my mind but yeah. it's generally speaking anywhere from kind of ambient electronica to hip-hop kind of beats jazz a lot of jazz and fusion and mm. That's, yeah, that's kind of what I meant, yeah. Cool. How did you get into that initially? <coughs> Take us um, back to when you were DJing a lot. How did you get into it? I get, it was actually just like before I started college, like down in Gorey, it's just, there, there seemed to be a scene there for a number of years and we had a great club out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. 
and a lot of a lot of lads in town just bought decks and so there was a lot of just kind of going around and pick picking that up and then yeah. when I went to college uh I lived with with people who had decks there and again just throwing parties in the college and got into then just kind of slowly building up my own collection and um just kind of being invited to things and playing different types of sets and yeah, yeah. So it's just gonna, it's gone from there, really. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, and do you see there being a kind of link between the music and, or your output with the music and the art, or? Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm very much influenced by stuff I'm listening mm. to. Like, I could probably talk to you more about music than I could <laughs> about <laughs> art, yeah. really. Like, um, and there's always music playing in the studio, yeah. like always. What's, and what's on rotation at the moment? <sighs> <laughs> uh, put you on the, on the spot, spot now. Yeah. Um, what am I listening to? A lot of Dean Blunt. Nice. Um, yeah, I, love. I mean, I'm constantly delving back into a lot of Warp records. So, Face mm. Fex Twins, Square Pusher. Um, uh, don't know. Stones Throw, kind of on the hip hop side of things. Um, Earl Sweatshirt, big fan of him and that whole world. And then, uh, just like discovering, like listen to a lot of 70s kind of stuff whether it's kind of rock or jazz yeah, and yeah. the fusion stuff and yeah. mm. so just like I like to go back and discover stuff that I haven't heard before you know? yeah. 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 so when you're working you need music on yeah, yeah so always <laughs> very good not to get too big or philosophical or anything <laughs> like that but there's an awful lot of challenges facing artists in Ireland um, what do you think are the biggest ones facing artists in Ireland at, at present um for me, it's lack of space. Like talking, uh, personally, like from experience, um, over the last few years, I was part of Richmond Road Studios, yeah. and we got turfed out there a year and a half ago, and yeah. and that building's probably still sitting there. You know, developers just kind of yeah. sitting on it. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been countless others, as you know yourself. Like, just it's it's unsettling. You know, to know that you can be in a place and not know how long you're there for and yeah. at the drop of a hat be asked to leave. Yeah. So, and it's like, it's the same conversation you have with everyone. Like when you're out and about, meet people and people are going through the same thing. It's just relentless and it's just kind of, it's it's like a reminder again and again. It's like a little finger middle finger up to artists yeah. and a bit of a kick in the face almost yeah, yeah. You know, it's like no yeah. not respected that much really yeah yeah well what do you think you could do what do you think artists can do like, in the face of this or is there i don't know like maybe because i just i tend to i maybe i'm just out the loop mm. or out the scene a bit like i tend to keep to myself a lot like i don't know it just needs I don't know maybe from young artists like just a bit of get up and go and a matter of taking over spaces really mm. um yeah I like you know again I could talk about it for for ages but I'm I'm kind of fed up talking about yeah. it as well yeah. 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 yeah yeah like um, my goal is I don't I don't really like I'm not I don't plan to stay in Dublin forever you know mm. from Wexford originally and that's yeah. kind of where myself and my wife want to end yeah. up eventually yeah. but like the dream is to have my own space yeah. where I can just do what I want and I don't have the fear of that. You know? yeah. yeah, exactly. Do you think that on a larger scale, do you think is there is there something practical that the government could do or that could that the arts councils could do essentially to to help artists who are struggling for space? Um that they're not that they're not trying to do or saying they're trying to do already? Like again, I'm not, like I don't really get too political on that side of things, but mm. Every so often you hear about promises being made and, you know, spaces being built and for artists, but it's kind of like just mm. seems to go on and on forever. And it's like, where it's are these the spaces? It's the never-ending and... narrative, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah after, after those heavy ones, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's your favourite colour? Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an even harder question than the one we just I, asked. I, I don't about believe in having a favourite colour or Why? a favourite... Anything album or favorite music? No, I just I'm too indecisive. Okay, it's ADHD in me. I'm just like <laughs> there's too many, too many options, choices. and yeah. 
too many nice colors. Like I'm an artist, so yeah. I can't yeah. like. I love is there a, is there a color you're yeah. using at the moment you really like? I mean, <clears throat> what I'm, about paint? I'm kind, shade, yeah. I'm kind kind of a sucker for pinks. Mm. Yeah, and like mint greens and yeah, yeah, like okay. color combinations more than mm. a color on the own. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right, I'm going to, again, yeah, really, these are, really good, like, re- these are like out, triggering. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, really triggering. Yeah, the worst possible yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're stuck on a desert island. <laughs> Three <laughs> albums only. What are they? Apex Twin, Drugs. Nice. Um, Mad Villainy, Mad Lib and MF Doom. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another one. <laughs> um... Again, yeah. there's too many, yeah. and my yeah. brain is just kind one. of shooting yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll come back to you. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you have three objects you'd bring to a desert island? <laughs> so, just to clarify this, because yeah. everyone needs clarification on it, all your food, survival, medical needs are all taken care of. Like you've, 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 you've water and food and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That. Lovely, three luxury res- resorts. Something three yeah, luxury exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you're trapped yeah, there and you gotta leave. But three luxury items, what would you bring? Luxury items. Um, again, like just a nice old hi fi stereo system with decent speakers. Yeah. And maybe just like all packed together, just kind of a stack of music, CDs, yeah. Yeah, records, yeah, yeah. whatever. That's just one that right, ready yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. one. As one, yeah. Um like can I bring like a, a box of paints with a little mini yeah. in there as well yeah, of course can yeah. with a painting yeah maybe fit some notebooks and yeah. stuff yeah. in there so item two yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah. uh, i don't know like maybe a nice chair and a rug Find yeah, place exactly. Get yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Just somewhere, like really somewhere for sitting, yeah. thinking, yeah. and appreciating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking at the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Cool. Beautiful. Sure. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the on the vein of your favorite questions, do you have a most kind of treasured work that you've oh. ever created? Um, I don't know. There's one actually hanging in my apartment which has kind of moved around from place to place it's never sold so I'm kind of it's one of those paintings that I'm just kind of used to yeah. seeing and I'm kind of like if I if it came to selling it I don't even know if mm. it would now anymore mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's called Molten Bones you can probably look it up there on yeah, Instagram yeah. <laughs> it's got like a I think it's like a cow or a horse skull and a, a volcano and another volcano and I don't know yeah, yeah. <laughs> I tend to like look at it quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Permanent fixture. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Now to go from a luxury desert island to being real morbid. <laughs> what's your uh, what's your debt row meal? Debt row meal. Mm. Mm. Again, this comes down to like not having a favorite anything, <laughs> but we have to go yeah. with it. I've been getting into jerk chicken and. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> 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 maybe something like that, yeah, with a nice slaw on the side and some hot sauce and Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sick. I like it a lot. Really nice. <laughs> Delicious. So if you had to spend the day with an artist, living or otherwise, do you know who you'd pick or why? David Hockney. Nice. Okay, cool. Because he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's been like a huge influence on me and I've just been a fan I just remember like seeing his work for the first time mm. in school in a school book like mm. tiny little picture yeah, yeah. and then from there like seeing stuff online but then actually seeing his work in person yeah. it, like almost brought me to tears a few yeah. times mm. yeah um I'd, and he just seems like such a sweet man <laughs> yeah, yeah like you just <laughs> want to sit down and yeah, have a cup of tea and yeah. chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go out, do a bit of painting with him, and just talk about whatever. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Shout out, David, if you're yeah. listening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> David. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So on that as well, do you have an artist that's kind of influenced you most? Do you think? He's definitely up there, mm. David Hockney. Again, Basquiat is like yeah. as mm. well. Um, I just was instantly drawn to his work since like school mm. and then again seeing it in the flesh is just yeah. it's I, I I don't know you just have a real response I do anyway mm. um, and then any list of artists I've just 
gotten to know from Instagram over the years that I couldn't even tell you their names yeah. right yeah, now. Yeah. You just know their work. But, like yeah. it's just a good place for discovering artists yeah. and yeah. Very good. Well, look, thanks a million for coming on. Yeah. Really appreciate having you. <laughs> thanks so um, much. Um if you want to find out more about James, where do you go? Uh, at James Kerwin Art. Okay. Yeah. Instagram. Check it out. Yeah. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah, <laughs> no, no thanks million for being on. Yeah. If you want to find out more about uh, the Sea True podcast, uh, you can do so at the Sea True podcast on Instagram. Or else you can find out more about Herman's Auctioneers at uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Herman's Auctioneers, or else at Herman.ie. Thanks, William. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.